Join Kids Hat Family. Good for others. Tofu, what goes around comes around. If you do good, good will come back to you. And if you do bad, bad will come back to you. What do you mean? Let me tell you the story of a little boy called Pinocchio. Pinocchio Once, there lived an old carpenter called Geppetto. He had no family and was quite lonely. Since he was quite poor, he would find leftover wooden logs and create something new out of them. One night, he found a large wooden log and took it home. Throughout the night, Geppetto worked on the log. And carved a young boy out of it. By the time he was done with it, it was morning. My, my, what a beautiful boy I have made. I wish he had a heart. Then he could be my son and I would call him Pinocchio. A good fairy who knew that Geppetto was a very nice man overheard him and suddenly the wooden boy spoke up. Hello! Geppetto was surprised but overjoyed. He hugged Pinocchio and told him that from that day he was Geppetto's son. Geppetto arranged for Pinocchio to go to school. To buy him his books, he sold off his dear chisel. Now you can go to school like a real boy. One morning, as Pinocchio was going to school, the evil puppet master stopped him. The puppet master wanted to own Pinocchio so he could use him to earn lots of money. Hello Pinocchio, do you want to go to the fun island? It is a wonderful magical place where you can become a real boy. Pinocchio was overjoyed at the idea of going to fun island. He quickly started walking with the Puppet Master. The good fairy who had been watching over Pinocchio suddenly appeared. Seeing her, the evil Puppet Master ran away leaving Pinocchio alone. Where are you going Pinocchio? To school, good fairy. Just as Pinocchio said the lie, his wooden nose grew longer. That isn't the way to the school, Pinocchio. Afraid that he had been caught, the boy decided to lie again. It is a new route. With the second lie, Pinocchio's nose grew even longer. Now he was very sad and started crying. <laughs> I am sorry. I won't go to the fun island. I will go to school. Seeing how sorry Pinocchio was, the good fairy did her magic and turned his nose into its normal size again. Pinocchio thanked her and dashed off to school. 
Once he reached school, he told all his friends about the fun island. All his friends decided to go and see this magical place. What they didn't know was that the magic in Fun Island was evil. It turned little boys into donkeys. Oh no! We are in trouble! Everybody, run from here! Just as the boys were figuring a way out of the island, Pinocchio saw Geppetto swimming towards the island. He had been looking out for Pinocchio all day. But to Pinocchio's horror, before Geppetto could reach him, a whale swallowed him up. To save his father, Pinocchio also jumped into the sea and went straight into the whale's stomach. There he saw Geppetto. Pinocchio, my son! Father, are you okay? How will we get out of here now? Well, we must tickle the whale from inside till it throws us out. And they started tickling the whale's stomach. Soon the whale sneezed and threw both of them out. Pinocchio helped his father and all his friends to get back to the village. The good fairy had been watching him all this time. Pinocchio, I have seen what a good boy you have been. Jumping into the sea to save your father like that. Hence, I am giving you a heart and making you a real boy. Pinocchio and Geppetto were overjoyed. They hugged each other and thanked the fairy as Pinocchio really turned into a real boy. Do you still think that doing good is a waste of time, Tofu? Oh no, never dear. From now on, I will always do good to others. Did you have a good birthday, Tofu? Yes, very much. And look at all the lovely gifts you've got. Uh, yes. Why? What's wrong? Mm, nothing is wrong, but I just thought Grandmom could have got me a better gift than the single rose flower. Tofu, that's not a nice thing to say. You didn't notice her love for you that made her fly all the way across the country to be with you today. Love? But that's not a gift. Maybe you'll think differently once you hear the story of the Snow Queen. The Snow Queen Once upon a time, in a small village lived two neighbours who were best friends too. Their names were Gerda and Kay. They loved each other a lot. As a symbol of their friendship and love, one day they both planted a rose plant each in their front yards. Every morning, they would get together and water their plants and take care of them. When winters came, Gerda invited Kay. Why don't you come over in the afternoon? My grandma has promised to make us a cup of hot chocolate and tell us a story. Okay Gerda, I will come over after finishing my chores. As promised, Kay went to Gerda's home in the afternoon. 
tell us the story of the Snow Queen, Grandmama? Bah! There is no Snow Queen. Do you still believe in such stories? Little did Kay know that the Snow Queen did exist. And she had a magic mirror with which she could look at anybody. And right at that moment, she was looking into Gerda's living room where they sat. Doesn't believe in me, does he? I will send him my ice arrows that will turn him cold. All the love will be gone from his eyes and his heart will freeze over. And the Snow Queen sent her ice arrows towards Kay. As soon as they entered Gerda's home, they went straight for Kay's eyes and heart. Ouch! My eyes! What's happening? They hurt! What is wrong, Kay? Ouch! My heart! It hurts too! Kay, what's wrong? Are you okay? Suddenly, Kay's whole behavior changed towards Gerda. Oh, stop being such a wimp, Gerda. Nothing is wrong. Get away from me. Saying so, he shoved Gerda aside and went home. Over the next few days, he would give cold, mean looks to Gerda and would never talk to her nicely. He wouldn't even come to tend to the roses that they had planted. One morning, when Gerda was watering the plants, she saw Kay get into a carriage with a lady who was wearing a white gown. She had skin like diamonds and her hair was silver white. Gerda immediately knew that it was the Snow Queen. She decided to follow her but the carriage just vanished into thin air. So she went to her grandmama. Here, take this hand mirror and follow what it tells you. The mirror only tells you the truth. Gerda took the mirror from her grandma and looked into it. The mirror told her to find the flower garden. So Gerda went looking for it. Meanwhile, once the Snow Queen reached the palace, she told Kay to make it his home from now on. This is your home now. You will never leave here. And once your heart freezes over, you will be mine forever. Back in the village, Gerda found the flower garden and entered it. The garden was full of the most beautiful flowers Gerda had ever seen. She fell in love with them immediately. But there was no smell of the flowers. Surprised, Gerda bent down and touched one of the flowers to understand if they were real. As soon as she touched one flower, the fragrances of all flowers returned and the flower lady appeared in front of her. Thank you! You have returned the fragrance of my flowers. Who are you? I am the owner of this garden. I am the flower lady. Can you help me? Have you seen my friend Kay pass through here? He has been taken by the Snow Queen. Oh no! The Snow Queen! She is one who had taken away the fragrance of my flowers. 
I did not see cake cross from here. But you should try the river outside the village. Gerda thanked the flower lady and went to the river. There she saw a boat waiting for her. She climbed into the boat and it took her to the pirate ship. Aboard the ship, Gerda saw many pirates including a girl pirate. Hello, can you help me? I am looking for my friend Kay. The Snow Queen has taken him. I don't know any Kay. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Because once aboard the pirate ship, you can't go anywhere. You have to be here. No, please, you have to let me go. Kay is my friend. I have to save him. Friend, you say? <laughs> well, I have never had a friend. Okay, I will help you if you promise to be my friend. Yes, of course. I would love to be your friend. Okay then. Take my reindeer. He is the fastest reindeer in the world. And she knows where the Snow Queen's palace is. Gerda thanked the pirate girl and climbed on the back of the reindeer. Just as the pirate girl had promised, the reindeer had Gerda outside the Snow Queen's palace in no time. Gerda got off the reindeer and went inside the palace. Kay? Kay? Are you in here? What are you doing here? I am here to take my friend back with me. <laughs> Your friend doesn't exist anymore. Look at him, standing there in the corner. Just in a few minutes, his heart will freeze over and then he will be mine forever. Gerda turned to see where the Snow Queen had pointed. In the corner stood Kay. His lips were blue and eyes were steely cold. Gerda rushed to him. Kay, it's me, your friend. When Kay didn't reply, she reached out for his hand. His old friend's touch returned the colour in Kay's eyes. Encouraged by this change, Gerda pushed on. Remember all the times we had fun at home? And our roses that we have in the front yard? There is no point in all this. His heart will freeze soon. Hearing this, Gerda broke down and started crying. <laughs> As she was crying, her tears rolled down from her eyes and onto the hands of Kay. As soon as that happened, Kay looked up at Gerda and smiled. Gerda, my friend, you came for me. This is impossible. Nothing can ever turn my curse over. She tried to pull Gerda away from Kay. And that's when Grandma's mirror fell out of Gerda's pocket. When the Queen looked into it, it spoke to her. Snow Queen, you have been mistaken. There is one power stronger than your curse and it is the power of love. Hearing this truth, the Snow Queen started crying and soon dissolved in a pool of her own tears. <laughs> oh, now I feel so terrible, dear. 
I think I have not been fair to Grandmom. Well, you still have time to make things better, Tofu. Yeah, you are right, Tia. I will go to her and apologize right away. Don't forget to give her a kiss and a big hug. Yay! We won! But why does Ron keep passing the ball to others? He's the best player on the team. He could make more goals if he just takes the ball all the way by himself. No, Tofu. To win, you always need a team. Every player is equally important on the team. Come, I will tell you a story about the importance of teamwork. Once upon a time, a girl called Dorothy lived in Kansas City. She was playing with her best friend, a dog named Toto, when a scary cyclone came their way. Dorothy called out to Toto. Toto, hurry! We have to get to the basement. But before they could reach the basement, the cyclone lifted their house up and blew it away. After some time, it fell somewhere with a thud. When Dorothy stepped out of the house, she saw the house had landed on someone. Oh no! Toto, help me! Who is she? The house has landed on her. I'm so sorry. Just then, Dorothy and Toto heard people behind them rejoicing. They were the munchkins. Thank you, thank you. You have just saved us from the evil witch of the east. You have saved us all. Just then, another witch appeared. She was the good witch. Hello, Dorothy. You have done a great deed by saving all the munchkins. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you. Could you please tell me how to go back to Kansas City? That's where I used to live. I can't do that. But I think the Wizard of Oz can help you with that. Just follow the yellow brick road. It will lead you straight to him. But before you go, take these red slippers that the evil witch of the east had. You might need them. Dorothy thanked the good witch, took the slippers and made her way on the yellow brick road with Toto. She had only walked a bit when she came across a scarecrow. Hello. I am the Scarecrow. I have everything I want, except a brain. My head is only filled with hay. Hello, Scarecrow. I am going to the Wizard of Oz. Why don't you come with me? He might be able to help you. And so Dorothy was joined by the Scarecrow. They had walked a few miles when they met the tin woodcutter. I want a heart. When my maker made me, 
He gave me everything but forgot to give me a heart. I wish he hadn't forgotten that. We are going to the Wizard of Oz. We are going to ask him for a way for Dorothy to get back to her home and for brains for me. Why don't you come with us? And so the tin woodcutter also joined them. They had walked for some time when they heard Toto barking. They turned around to see that a lion had attacked Toto. Get away from my dog, you nasty lion! The lion whimpered and ran away to a corner. Oh no! You aren't a brave lion at all, are you? No, I have no courage. I wish I had some. We are going to the Wizard of Oz. We will ask him for a brain for the Scarecrow, a way for Dorothy to get back home and a heart for me. Come with us. We will ask him for courage for you. The lion agreed and they all continued on the yellow brick road. They kept following the road and reached the Emerald City. They knocked on its big gates. A guard appeared. The wizard doesn't meet anyone but he has agreed to meet all of you. And so all the friends went to meet the wizard. They told him how and why they had come to meet him. Thank you Dorothy for freeing the lands from the evil witch of the east. But I will grant all your wishes when you free us from the evil witch of the west too. The friends agreed to the wizard's terms and left to find the evil witch of the west. But the evil witch of the west had heard about what had happened to the evil witch of the east. She also knew about Dorothy and her friends plan to kill her. She planned an attack on them. She sent a pack of her scariest wolves to stop them. The tin woodcutter stepped forward. This is a job for me. Everyone, stay back. The woodcutter hacked at the wolves with his axe till they all ran away. The wolves had just left when the skies became dark and many crows started coming down to peck at them all. This time the scarecrow stepped forward and scared all the crows away. Next, the evil witch sent flying monkeys. Before anyone could do anything, the monkeys grabbed them all and took them to the evil witch's castle. So, you've come to kill me, huh? How will you do that? The woodcutter is lying in a pile over the stones. I have emptied the scarecrow 
and strapped the cowardly lion to pull my cocks. Oh, you are so evil! What a horrible person you are! Saying so, Dorothy grabbed the bucket of water that was lying there and threw the water at the witch. Oh no! You threw water over me? I am going to shrink and melt! Help me! I'm melting! Oh my god! I'm melting! Help me! And so the evil witch of the west melted away. As that happened, all her slaves became free. They repaired the woodcutter, filled the scarecrow with hay and released the lion. Dorothy and her friends went back to the Emerald City. The Wizard of Oz welcomed them and granted the wishes of the Scarecrow, the Woodcutter and the Lion. What about my wish? How will I get back home? You don't need me for that. You had the power all along. Just click your heels together thrice and tell the slippers where you want to go. They will take you there. Though Dorothy was excited to go home, she was sad to leave her friends. She said a tearful goodbye to them. Then she picked up Toto in her arms and clicked her heels together three times and told her slippers to take her home. So you see Tofu? If all the friends hadn't worked together, they would have not been able to defeat the evil witch of the West. Hmm, yes Tia, I now understand the importance of a team. Tia? I think we will take long to reach. Can you please tell me some interesting story? Why not Tofu? Let me tell you a story about a princess and a bad fairy. Sleeping Beauty A long time ago, there lived a king and a queen. They wished for a child for a very long time. After a long, long wait, their wish came true. A beautiful girl was born to the king and queen. The king announced to his people, we are blessed with a baby princess and her name is Sunshine. Hooray! said the people. As the baby girl turned one, Celebrations began all around. A big party had to be planned. We must invite all the fairies. Yes, we must call them all. But not the black fairy. She is mean. She is bad. The party was a lot of fun. 
the baby princess looked lovely all fairies brought with them some precious gifts and blessed the little princess to be a clever and kind girl suddenly the castle was filled with blue smoke and nobody could see anything as soon as the blue smoke settled king and queen were shocked to see the black fairy she saw that a beautiful celebration was organized and everyone from the kingdom was invited for the feast including all fairies she became very angry for not being invited and that's why she cursed the baby princess on your 16th birthday before the sun sets you'll prick on a spindle and die she screamed in anger and vanished everybody was shocked suddenly a young fairy who had not yet given her blessings to the little princess said i can't take away the black fairy's curse but i'll definitely try to help when the princess pricks herself she won't die instead she'll go into a deep sleep and shall only awaken with a kiss from a prince who loves her after this the king ordered to destroy all spindles and needles from the kingdom soon there were no sharp things in the castle except for one they didn't check in the tower as years passed by the baby grew under supervision of fairies and turned out to be a very beautiful young girl When she turned 16 while roaming in the castle one day she saw a magical light ball and followed the light ball which took her to the top of the tower in the castle inside there was an old woman bent over a spinning wheel come here you must try spinning this wheel oh what is this please let me do it as well I have never tried this. But the minute she touched the needle of the spindle, she fell to the ground. Black Fairy's curse had come true. Old woman, who was actually the Black Fairy, laughed and laughed and then disappeared. The king who remembered the words of the last fairy made her daughter the princess to lie in a room for many years to come. Fairies saw the princess sleeping and everyone thought that she was extremely beautiful. They all said at once Sleeping Beauty Soon 
this name became popular in town and everyone started to mention princess as the sleeping beauty the whole kingdom was sad fairies noticed this and decided let the whole kingdom fall asleep so when the princess wakes up by her prince she wouldn't be alone everyone in the kingdom fell asleep the king the queen the servants soldiers everyone in town fell asleep even all the animals fell asleep everything in the kingdom stopped soon a thick forest grew around the castle and hid it About hundreds of years later a handsome prince was riding through the forest He saw the strange looking castle The accompanying soldiers told the prince that this is the castle of the sleeping beauty He had heard stories of sleeping beauty and started to explore it He was surprised to see everybody in the castle sleeping When he entered more he saw even the king and queen were sleeping He looked around and saw one big pink door He tried to open the door but it was difficult to open as it was closed for so many years After trying hard he managed to open the door and to his surprise he found sleeping beauty lying on a beautiful bed in that room The moment he saw her he just fell in love with her I really want to know who this beautiful girl is she looks so so gentle and peaceful he said he leaned down and kissed her instantly the kiss lifted the spell and the princess woke up the king queen and all the people and animals in the kingdom were awake again The kingdom was full of joy and there were celebrations all around The prince and the princess soon got married and lived happily ever after Wow it means No matter if bad people think bad for you there are always some well wishers to help you out Animals have such an easy life dear no school no rules no homework What do they have to worry about? Everybody has their troubles, Tofu. Let me tell you the story of Thumbelina. Once upon a time, A woman lived by herself in a far away village. 
she was very lonely after her husband had died. She always wanted to have a child, but alas, she didn't have any. One day, she went to her friend who was a witch. The witch gave her a grain of barley and told her to go back home and plant it. The woman did as she was told. The next morning, a beautiful plant had grown from the seed. It had a lovely flower that looked like a tulip. The woman had never seen a flower like that and was mesmerized by its beauty. She gently kissed one of its petals. As she did that, the flower blossomed open. Inside it was a beautiful little girl, no bigger than the size of the woman's thumb. The woman instantly fell in love with her and called her Thumbelina. Thumbelina took away the woman's loneliness. In the day, she would tell her stories and talk to her. Sometimes she would make Thumbelina a boat out of a tulip petal which she could row in a plate full of water. At night, Thumbelina would sleep in a bed out of a walnut shell with a blanket made of a rose petal. One night, as she was sleeping, a frog came to her window and saw her. He thought to himself, what a beautiful girl. She will make a lovely bride for my son. And so he grabbed Thumbelina and hopped away to his home. When his son saw his bride-to-be, he was very happy. She is beautiful, father. I will marry her. But before that, I want to build her a beautiful house. Okay, son. I will put her on the water lily in the middle of the pond till then. This way she will not be able to escape. And so the frog put Thumbelina in the middle of the pond on a water lily leaf. Thumbelina tried to escape from her new home, but when she couldn't, she broke down crying. Two minnows were sitting under the same leaf and they heard her cry. They asked her about her troubles and when she told them, they decided to help her. They nibbled away the lily stem. Soon it broke and floated away with Thumbelina. Just when Thumbelina thought she was free, a beetle came down and took her away to his home. He called over his friends to introduce them to his pretty prisoner. But the beetle's friends told him that she was too different than them and she didn't belong with them. I agree. I think I should let her go. 
and so he dropped her in the long grass and flower. Thumbelina was very happy that she was free from her captors. However, she still did not know where her home was. She spent many days in the grass and between the flowers. She would eat the pollen of the flowers and drink the dew from the leaves. One day, as she was walking, she stumbled upon a small house made of mud. It had a strange round entrance. She went up to it and knocked on the door. A mouse opened the door. Oh, hello there. Isn't it cold out there for you today? Come in, please. Thank you so much. Once Thumbelina was settled comfortably in the mouse's house, he asked her about who she was. Thumbelina told him her entire story. Do not worry, you can stay here as long as you like. So Thumbelina started staying in her new found home. To make herself useful in the house, she would cook for the mouse and tell him stories. After a few days, the mouse said he had invited a guest over. He is the richest mouse in all the land. He is a very good friend of mine. That night, the mouse's friend came over for dinner. They all talked and had a very good time. During the course of dinner, the friend fell in love with Thumbelina and declared that he would marry her. Thumbelina had no choice but to go along with what was happening. When the friend offered to show her his home, she agreed to visit his house and the three of them set off together. On the way, they entered a tunnel. There they found an injured swallow lying on the ground. The mouse's friend kicked it and rudely said, Serves her right. What is she doing in the tunnels? He should have stayed in the air. Thumbelina was shocked to see that someone could treat another like this. Unseen by the mice, she ran away from there. Once she was sure that the mice had left, she came back and attended to the swallow. She took great care of her. Till she was fit to fly again. It 
became spring by the time the swallow could fly again. She told Thumbelina, I have to join my family and friends. They have flown away to a warmer place. I cannot stay here. Come with me. But Thumbelina had had enough adventure and did not want to go anywhere else. And so the swallow flew away. A few months had passed when the love-struck friend of the mouse found Thumbelina again. Oh, my beloved! I have been looking for you everywhere. Now I have found you and must marry you. Thumbelina knew there was no way out of it for her. So she asked him if she could spend one last day out in the open air before she was confined to living the rest of her life underground with him. As she roamed in the open fields for one last time, she heard a familiar voice. Come, come away with me, where your spirit will always be free. Thumbelina saw her old friend who had returned for her. This time around, she agreed and hopped on the back of the swallow and they took off. They flew over land and water and fields of green. When they reached the land of the flowers, the swallow landed Thumbelina on a beautiful flower petal. This is the kingdom of the flowers and that is their king. Thumbelina saw a handsome young king with beautiful wings. He was surrounded by lovely flowers. As soon as she saw him, she knew she wanted to call this place home. Her presence attracted the king's attention. He too fell in love with her immediately. Will you marry me? Yes! As happiness spread across her face, she grew a beautiful pair of wings and became the Flower Queen. Oh wow, dear! I don't know what I would do if I would land in such a strange world. I think I am happy where I am. Tia, aren't you going to your friend's party? No, Tofu. Mummy has asked me to stay home with you tonight because she and Papa will be returning home late. Oh no! I'm sorry, Tia. Because of me, you can't go to your party. It's okay, Tofu. Sometimes we have to sacrifice things for the ones we love. Just like the little mermaid. Little mermaid? Is it a story? Tell me, Tia, please. The Little Mermaid Once upon a time, there was a sea kingdom at the bottom of the sea. The king of the seas had six beautiful daughters who were mermaids. They were all very beautiful, but the youngest of them was the prettiest of them all. She had a gentle face, big round eyes 
and a voice sweeter than anyone else's in the world. When the little mermaid turned 15 years old, her grandmother called her to her room. Come, my darling. Today you have turned 15. And from now onwards, you can go to the world above. Just remember, the people above are very different from us. They do not have a beautiful fish tail like us. Instead, they have two legs. Thank you, Grandmother. I have waited for this day for so long. When I return, I will tell you about everything I see above. That night, the little mermaid went to the surface of the water. The sight of the stars and the cool breeze that touched her face took her breath away. She was just getting used to the feeling when she saw a big ship cross in front of her. Aboard it were many men and they were celebrating the birthday of the young prince who had just turned 16. The little mermaid was mesmerized with the handsome looks of the prince. She couldn't take her eyes off him as the ship sailed past her. She was so lost in him that she did not notice the storm build up in the sky and the sea begin to rage. The ship had only sailed a little further when the storm shook it up. The sailors tried to stir it to safety but many men including the prince fell into the sea. The little mermaid rushed to him and saved him from drowning. She took him ashore. Don't worry, you are safe. Open your eyes. But the prince lay unconscious. The mermaid decided to get help. When she couldn't get any, she came back to where the prince was. She saw him surrounded by many people. A beautiful princess was kneeling by him as others worked to awaken him. The prince opened his eyes and the little mermaid was relieved that her prince will be saved now. You saved my life. Thank you. The prince knew nothing about the little mermaid. He didn't even know that it was she who had actually saved his life. This broke the mermaid's heart. She went back to her father's home. She told her sisters and grandmother what had happened. Forget him, child. Humans and we are very different. To be with him forever, you will have to get him to love you more than anything else he loves in the world, even more than his own parents. How will that ever happen? Think about it. But the little mermaid could not forget 
the handsome prince. Every night she visited the spot where she had laid him after saving his life. One day, she decided to visit the witch in her father's kingdom. Maybe she knew a way that the mermaid could be with the prince. Yes, there is a way. I can send you to the land above the sea. You will lose your fish tail and have legs. If by the second sunset you can get the prince to love you more than he loves his parents, then you can be with him forever. Otherwise, you will die and become foam in the sea. But in return, you must give me your voice. But without my voice, how will I make the prince fall in love with me? You still have your pretty face and eyes. You will also be the most beautiful dancer anyone has ever seen. Now go. In a flash, the mermaid found herself on the land. Her fish tail turned into human legs. It caused her pain, but she could not even scream because the witch had taken her voice away. Somehow, the mermaid made her way to the prince's castle. There was a big celebration going on there. But the guards would not let the mermaid enter because they didn't know who she was and she couldn't answer them when they asked her about it. So she was not allowed to enter. Somewhere in the castle, music started playing. Remembering what the witch had said about dancing, Little Mermaid started dancing. Oh, I have never seen anyone dance so beautifully. Maybe she has come to dance for the royal family in the celebrations. Oh, she is a dancer. Let me take her to the court. Once the mermaid reached the royal court, she saw that the celebration was for the wedding of the prince. Little mermaid was heartbroken. She thought the only way of meeting the prince now would be to dance and draw his attention towards her. And so she performed a beautiful dance for the royal family. When the prince saw her, he came up to her. Hello, young lady. I have seen you in my dreams. Who are you? In his heart, the prince hoped that she would be the one who had saved him from drowning. He longed to hear the voice that had saved him when he was dying. But no sound came out when the little mermaid tried to reply. Forgive me, I think I am confused between you and someone else. But please do join us. 
The prince led her to the ship on which the wedding was going to take place. Many people spoke to her, but she could not answer anyone. The princess was especially kind to her and took special care of her. I know you saved the prince that day. Thank you. Because of you, I have found the love of my life. Please, always stay with us. The little mermaid saw that the princess and the prince loved each other and were very happy together. She decided not to pursue the prince anymore. He belonged to another woman. Although her heart ached to let him go, she happily attended the wedding and all the celebrations that went on throughout the next day. Soon it was evening. The second sunset was about to happen. The little mermaid knew she would die and become foam on the sea. As she stood there, looking at the prince and his princess, she heard some voices behind her. She turned around to see. Her sisters were there in the water. But all of them had very short hair now, instead of the long flowing locks they used to have earlier. Sisters, what are you doing here? We have come to save you. We went to the witch. In exchange of our hair, she gave us this knife. If you stab the prince through his heart before sunset, you can be saved. Handing the knife to the youngest sister, all the other sisters vanished under the water once again. The little mermaid stood there holding the knife to her heart. She looked at the newlyweds once again. She knew what she had to do. At the sunset, she tossed the knife into the sea. Goodbye, my love. And so, for the happiness of her beloved prince, the little mermaid sacrificed her own life and joined the sea as foam. Tia, this is such a beautiful story. It shows how much the little mermaid loved the prince. Thank you for not going to the party and staying with me. That's because I love you, my little brother. I love you too, my darling sister, Tia. Look at that man, Tia. He looks so scary. I wouldn't want to be around him. That is not a nice thing to say, Tofu. Just because he scares you, doesn't mean he's not kind and caring. Let me tell you a story of the beauty and the beast. The Beauty and the Beast Belle lived in a village with her father Morris who was an inventor. One morning, as she was returning from the market, a hunter named Gaston stopped her. 
Gaston was an arrogant young man. Everybody in the village knew he always got what he wanted. But no one ever dared stand up against him because his father was the village head. The only person who paid no attention to Gaston was Belle. But Gaston was obsessed with her and wanted to marry her. Belle, let me walk you home. Oh, Gaston, N no, thank you. I can go home myself. I insist. I have to talk to your father about something important too. Belle continued walking, ignoring Gaston, who started walking with her. Once home, Belle quickly went inside. Morris! Morris, come out. I have to talk to you. What is it? It is your lucky day. I am going to marry Belle. You have lost your mind. Go away, Gaston. Belle is never going to marry you. Just then, there was a loud explosion in Morris's lab. And he took off towards it. Belle also ran towards her father's lab. Seeing that there was no one he could push around, Gaston left. Papa! Papa! Are you alright? I have done it, Belle. My experiment was successful. I am leaving for the fair in the nearby village immediately. You will see, my child. People are going to love this. And so Morris leapt on his horse Philip and rode off. But as he was crossing the forest, he got lost. After a few hours, Philip and he landed in front of a huge lonely castle. There was no one in sight, so Morris tied Philip to a pole at the entrance and went inside the castle. It was pitch dark inside. A few candles were lit in the corners. Hello, is anyone here? I am lost. C can you help me? A large shadow came across the wall. As it came into light, Morris saw that it was not a man, but a huge angry beast with an ugly scar across his face. How dare you enter my castle? You need help? I will help you. I'm sorry. I, I will leave immediately. And Morris started running back the way he had come. But the beast caught him and started dragging him. He took him down the staircase and locked him in the dungeon. Please, please let me go. Please let me go. You will stay here forever. This dungeon is your world now. A whole day had passed and Morris hadn't returned. Belle got worried and decided to go to the nearby village to look for her father.
but she too got lost in the forest and landed up at the same castle. Philip was still there, tied to the pole. Belle decided to go inside, just in case her father was there. Hello? Papa? Anybody here? How dare you enter my castle? Get out right away before I lock you in the dungeon too. Suddenly, the beast moved out of the shadows and stood in front of Belle. She was terrified of him, but dared not run. Somewhere from far away, she could hear another voice. It was her father. Please, please let me go. Let me go, please. Open this door. Let me go, please. Do you have my father? Can you please let him go? Hey, what are you saying? I will stay instead of him. Please let him go. Hearing this, the beast took Belle's hand and dragged her up the stairs. He led her into a huge room. So be it. Your father is free and you shall be my prisoner forever. And so it was. No matter how much Morris protested, the beast threw Morris out of the castle and into the forest with Philip. When dinner time came, Belle did not join the beast for dinner. Instead, she stayed in her room crying. The beast entered her room and said, If you are going to stay in this castle, you have to follow its rules. You are expected at dinner. Don't you dare miss it next time. You are a monster. You didn't even let me see my father one last time. Go away. I hate you. Seeing Belle heartbroken, the beast felt bad. He pulled out a hand mirror from his coat and gave it to her. In the mirror, she would be able to see whomever she wanted to see at that moment. Belle looked into the mirror and saw her father finally leaving from the castle and riding into the forest. But to her horror, she saw he and Philip had suddenly been attacked by a pack of wolves. She gave out a loud cry and ran downstairs out of the castle gates and towards her father. Soon, she found herself and her father, Morris, surrounded by ferocious wolves. Just as the wolves were about to attack Belle, a large paw grabbed one of them by the neck and threw it away. The wolves now turned on the beast who had decided to follow Belle and help her save her father. The bees scared them off, but not before they had bit into his arm and injured Morris too. He put Morris on Philip, who took off riding as soon as his master was secure. The bees tried to walk towards the castle, but fainted and fell. He woke up two days later to find Belle 
sitting by his bedside in his room. The wounds on the arm had been bandaged. You... you didn't go? You are awake. I hope you're feeling better. Thank you for saving our lives. Over the next few days, Belle nursed the beast back to health. As they spent time together, Belle realized that he wasn't as mean as he appeared to be the first day they had met. In turn, the beast learned to change his ways and became gentler and kinder. Soon they became very good friends. One day, Belle asked the beast if she could see her father in the mirror. The beast agreed and gave her the mirror. In the mirror, Belle saw all the villagers storming her house. They thought that Morris had gone mad and wanted to send him to the doctor. Nobody believed him when he kept insisting that Belle had been kept as a prisoner by a beast. Worried about her father, Belle requested if she could go to the village for a day just to save her father. And though the beast knew that she might never return, he agreed. Go, but take this mirror with you. In case you ever want to see me. Once Belle reached her house, she stood between her father and the villagers and tried to explain the truth. But the angry mob led by Gaston who wanted revenge from Morris and Belle for turning his wedding proposal down, wouldn't listen. Gaston grabbed Belle's hand and tried to get her out of the way. As she struggled to free herself, the beast's mirror fell out of her pocket. In it was the beast, looking right at them all. Goodness! She's shown the beast the way to the village. We must go and kill him before he comes here. The angry mob started marching towards the castle with fire torches and swords. They left behind Morris and Belle locked up in their house. Soon they stormed the castle gates. Gaston went upstairs and challenged the beast to a fight. But the beast had had a change of heart. He did not wish to fight. So he came out of the balcony unarmed and tried to talk to the villagers. But Gaston wouldn't have it. He wanted to kill the beast and so he attacked him. His sword pierced through the beast's stomach. Shocked, the beast swung his arm to protect himself. Scared, Gaston stepped backwards and fell off the balcony and died. Somehow, Belle had escaped from her house. And reached the balcony just as the beast fell on the floor. Uh, I, I love you, Belle. I love you too. Please don't go. Suddenly, the castle lit up with thousands of candles. As Belle still lay crying by the beast, 
he turned into a handsome young prince. Well, it's me. You freed me from the witch's spell. To break the spell, I had to love and win the love of another. You loved me even through I was a beast. You saved me, Belle. You saved me. It really is you? As they hugged each other, they saw the rest of the castle and the forest bloom with beautiful trees and flowers. So you see, Tofu, you should never judge people by the way they look. I'm sorry, Tia. I will always remember this now. Good night, Tofu. Once upon a time, there lived a lonely couple who only wished to have a child. They lived in a little house all on their own. At the back of the house, there was a small little window from which a splendid garden could be seen. This garden was full of very beautiful flowers and herbs. No one dared to enter the garden as it belonged to a witch named Dame Gothel. One day, the woman saw a plant called Rampion, which is used to make salads. Dear husband, I have a strong desire to have a salad made out of that plant. Oh, but that belongs to the wicked witch. Oh, please do something. I really want to eat those Rampions. Okay, dear. I will try to get it for you. At midnight, the husband climbed the wall into the garden of the witch. And started taking some rampions. The man took the rampion and his wife made a salad out of it and ate it. But the very same night, there was a knock on the door and the man knew something was wrong. How dare you, you men! Come into my garden and steal my rampions like a thief. You will suffer for it. Oh, please forgive me. My wife saw your rampions from the window and she wanted it so bad that I could not say no to her. Oh! If that's the truth, then I will let you have as many rampions as your wife wants, but only on one condition. What is that condition? You must give me the child which your wife will bring into this world. The man in his terror consented to everything. As time passed by, the couple gave birth to a beautiful little baby girl. But that very same night, the witch came to their door and took away the baby girl, leaving the poor parents in complete sorrow. You are such a beautiful looking girl. I will name you Rapunzel and take care of you. <laughs> the witch kept her locked in a tower with no doors and stairs but just a small little window. As the time passed by, Rapunzel grew into a beautiful girl with very long golden locks. But her beauty went in vain because the cruel witch never allowed her to go anywhere. Sad Rapunzel just used to stand at the little window and sing sad songs. 
When the witch had to visit Rapunzel, she used to ask Rapunzel to let down her hair. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. One day, when Rapunzel was standing at the window singing sad songs, la, la, la. a very handsome prince was passing by. He stopped and looked here and there to see where this beautiful voice was coming from. La, la, la. Oh! What a beautiful song! Who is singing so beautifully? The prince noticed the beautiful voice coming from the tower. He wanted to climb the tower and looked for the door, but could not find one. He went back home in dismay. But Rapunzel's singing had touched his heart so much that every day he started going to the forest to listen to Rapunzel's song. One day, he was standing behind the tree when he saw the witch coming. And he heard what she said. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. Then Rapunzel let down her long beautiful hair. And the witch climbed up the tower. Oh, that's the way to climb up to the tower. I shall do the same. The next day, when it began to grow dark, he went to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair down to me. Immediately the hair fell down and the prince climbed up. Oh, who are you? Oh Lord, you are the most beautiful maiden that I have ever seen in my life. I have lost my heart to you. Will you marry me? Will you be my wife and live with me in my kingdom? Oh my prince, I wish that was possible. But the witch won't let me go out of this tower. And if she comes to know about you, she will kill you. I don't care. You are coming with me now. Come on, let's go. Oh Prince, I am ready to go away with you. But I do not know how to get down. If I let down my hair, then how will I get down? You are right. Mm. You have to go now. The witch will come soon. Yes, don't worry Rapunzel. I will think of something and come back tomorrow. That moment, when the prince was climbing down the tower, the witch saw him. Oh, so he wants to take Rapunzel away. They both will have to pay for this. The witch climbed the tower after asking Rapunzel to let down her hair. You treacherous girl! How could you even think of betraying me? You shall pay for this. The witch took a big pair of scissors and chopped off her long beautiful tresses. Rapunzel was left all alone in the desert by the witch to live in grief 
and misery. Meanwhile, the prince returned the next evening to take Rapunzel away. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The wicked witch let down the long braid that she had chopped off from Rapunzel's hair and the prince climbed the tower without knowing what danger was awaiting him. When the prince was about to enter the window, the wicked witch chopped off the braid just to see the prince fall off the tower into the thorny bushes under the tower. The prince started bleeding from his eyes as the thorns blinded him completely. <laughs> the witch cast a spell on the prince. And he wandered in woods around the world without any sight and survived in poor conditions. Meanwhile, the prince roamed about in misery for two years and finally he got to the desert where Rapunzel was left by the witch. La, la, la. He suddenly heard the beautiful sad voice of his beloved and started shouting in excitement. That voice! That voice! Is it you, Rapunzel? Is it really you? He went towards it and when he approached, Rapunzel said, Oh Prince, you finally found me. I missed you so much. I am so happy to see you that I can't stop crying. Two of her tears fell on his eyes and they grew clear again and he could see with them as before. I can see again. Oh my sweet Rapunzel, what have they done to us? Let's go back to my kingdom. He took her to his kingdom. After a year, Rapunzel gave birth to a pretty little baby girl who looked just like her and they lived happily ever after. Get up, Tofu! Or you'll get late for school. Get up, Tofu! <sighs> Dia, you? <laughs> what happened? That... That was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That was me in your dream. Now get up and get ready. Tia, yesterday in our class, my friend Ben forgot to bring one of his textbook and Ted offered to share his textbook with him. Ben promised Ted to help him in learning football after school. But after school, when Ted asked Ben to help as promised, instead of helping, Ben left for his home. That's bad. One should always stand by their promises. But Tia, today again Ben forgot his textbook and when he asked Ted to help, Ted refused. Tofu, we should be sensitive towards every human being. You know, we should always help people around. Come, I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful princess in the kingdom of a very humble king. The princess was so pampered by her father that she turned out to be a little proud of the fact that she is a princess. Many a times the king asked her to be more humble towards the people around her because that's the way a princess should be. I know my little princess 
that you are my pampered child. But you should be little more empathetic towards other people. Everybody is same. It's just that some are fortunate, some are not. But the princess just ignored what her father had to say and went out to play with the golden ball that her father had gifted her on her birthday. She loved the ball, but no sooner had she started playing that her ball bounced and went into a pond. Oh God, my favorite golden ball. I would give anything to get back my favorite ball. Anything. Hearing the princess cry out loudly, a frog leaped up and sat on a lotus leaf and said, Princess, I just saw what happened. I will get the golden ball back for you. But you have to promise me something. How in the world did the slimy frog talk? The princess only wanted her ball back. So she hurriedly said yes. What is it that you want in return? I want you to take me back to your palace and pamper me. I would eat with you, play with you and sleep in bed with you. The princess was horrified at the very idea and had no intention of doing any such thing. She agreed to the condition as she thought the frog would not be able to reach the palace on his own and she had no intention of taking him along with her. She told him to hurry and get the ball back and waited with bated breath for her golden ball. The frog jumped into the pond and in no time at all came back with the golden ball. She took the ball from him and ran back to her palace as fast as she could. Princess, come back! You promised to take me with you! You can't break your promise! But the princess ignored to his calling and ran as fast as she could. She was relieved when she reached her room and soon forgot all about the frog. At night, while she was having dinner with her father, there was a loud knock on the door. Open the door, a oh princess! It's me, the frog from the pond. You promised to keep me with you. Being a true princess, you should keep up to your promise now. Who is that and what does he want? The princess, being a little scared of her father, told him about the afternoon incidents. And how she broke her promise. You are a true princess, my love. And you should keep up to your promise, no matter what. Feeling helpless, the princess opened the door and let the frog enter. He hopped on to the seat next to her and asked her to let him eat from her plate. The frog ate till his tummy was full. But the princess couldn't eat a single bite thinking about the slimy frog eating from her plate. Then the frog asked her to carry him to her bedroom and let him sleep in her bed. Unwillingly, she picked him up in her hands and went upstairs. The frog jumped on her bed and snuggled cozily in her huge soft bed.
The next morning, the princess got up to find the frog missing from her bed. Happily, she hopped from her bed, thinking that the ordeal was over. But as the night fell, the knock again happened. And again the frog ate from her plate and slept in her bed. Feeling sad about sharing her food and bed, she went to her father and asked him if she could stop now. The king again told her that a promise was a promise and cannot be broken. It was the third night when the frog came in again to eat and sleep in her bed. But the next morning, the princess was astonished to see that the frog was not in her bed. And a handsome young prince was standing next to her bed. What? Who are you? Where is the slimy frog? Dear princess, it's me, the frog. A witch cast a spell on me that could be broken only if a princess would let me eat in her plate and sleep in her bed for three nights. You broke that spell by keeping your promise and here I am standing in front of you. I am the prince from the neighboring country. Would you like to be my wife? Not able to resist the handsome prince, she said yes, but had something more to say. Oh prince, I would love to be your wife. But how would you forgive me for being so rude to you? She was guilty like hell, but the prince was a humble man. He said, Oh my dear princess, I can understand your reasons and I am ready to forgive you. But you have to promise me that in future you won't judge anybody by the way one looks or the job one does. Everyone is equal and that's how they should be treated, equally. Saying this, the prince took her in his arms and decided to take her to his kingdom where they lived happily ever after. Oh dear, you are right. We should always keep our promises and help people in need. Thanks for the lovely moral story. Come Tofu, let's go and play some games now. Bored, will you please stop reading and talk to me? Bored? How can you get bored, Tofu? Why don't you write a story of your own? Uh, I can't think up a story, Tia, especially when I am so bored. Looks like you haven't heard of Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland One sunny day, Alice was sitting next to her sister while she was reading. Her sister had been reading books all morning and Alice was very bored now. She thought for a while and decided to ask her sister to stop reading. 
She was about to do that when she saw a little white rabbit with pink eyes run past her. I am late. I have to hurry. I am late. Saying so, he ran into his rabbit hole. Alice was suddenly interested in this turn of events and she decided to follow the rabbit. She went to his rabbit hole and peered down it. Suddenly, the hole gave away and Alice fell into it. She kept falling for what seemed like a very long time. Will I ever stop falling? What kind of a strange hole is this? At last, she landed with a thud in a big empty room. The room had three doors of different sizes. She saw the rabbit outside the smallest door before it closed shut. But the door was very tiny. No bigger than Alice's new pencil back home. I must get on the other side of that door. But how will I do that? It is so small. Then Alice noticed a small table in the corner of the room. She went to it to find a small bottle of pink potion with the label Drink Me on it. Next to it was a small little key. The size of the smallest door's lock. I think this key belongs to that door. I wonder what this potion will do to me. Uh, let me try. And so Alice took the key in one hand and drank the potion from the bottle. Suddenly, Alice could no longer see the top of the table. The empty bottle of the pink potion became too heavy for her and fell out of her hand. She was shrinking. What is happening to me? I am shrinking. Once Alice was small enough to go through the smallest door, the shrinking stopped. Alice quickly ran to the door, opened it and ran out. She found herself in the most beautiful garden she had ever seen. But she could not enjoy it because she was so tiny and all the flowers and plants were so big. Oh, I wish I was bigger. Hearing her, the white rabbit came to her and ordered her rather rudely. Go to my house and get my gloves and fan. Alice didn't know why the rabbit was so rude to her. Perhaps he didn't like being followed. Nevertheless, she decided to follow the instructions because she was curious and wanted to see the rabbit's house. When she entered the rabbit's home, she saw a yummy looking cake on the kitchen top. It had a sticker on its plate that said, Eat me. Alice was really hungry by now. She'd even missed lunch. So she decided to eat the cake. As soon as she took one bite, she started growing again. 
Soon, she would not fit into the house. She could not see the rabbit's gloves anywhere, but grabbed his fan and decided to run out of the house. As soon as she came out, she started shrinking again. Oh no! What is this? Will I ever be back to my normal size again? One of my mushrooms makes you grow tall and the other side makes you shrink. Alice turned to see who was talking to her. It was a caterpillar sitting on a mushroom. She quickly ate a piece from the side he was pointing and came back to her normal size. She thanked him for his help and asked, How do I get back home? Could you please tell me that? That path leads to the Mad Hatter and the other one to the rabbit's home. This time it was a cat that sat in the tree that spoke. Alice thanked him and took the path to the Mad Hatter. She didn't want to meet the rude rabbit again. I will meet you in the evening at the Queen's Palace. Halt! To go further, you must answer my question correctly. Oh, I love riddles. Please do ask me a question. Tell me, why is a raven like a writing desk? Alice thought for a while, but she did not know the answer to the riddle. I don't know the answer to your question. Could you tell me why? The Mad Hatter was taken aback. Never had anyone asked him the answer to his own riddle. Oh well, I don't know either. We don't know anything here. You can go ahead on the path. Hence Alice proceeded to the Queen's castle where a game of croquet was on. The Queen was very unkind and unreasonable. If she didn't like someone, she would instruct her soldiers to be off with his or her heads immediately. Her guards had made a mistake earlier in the day and so she had turned them into cards for the game. When the queen saw Alice, She instructed her to play with her. You will play croquet with me and if I lose, it will be off with the head for you. Yes, your majesty. Alice was very careful. But the queen was terrible at the game. And Alice had to try really hard to lose. Ha! You lost. If I like, I will have your head for it. A trumpet sounded far off and the white rabbit hopped forward. The royal court is now in session 
and you will be tried. Tried? For what? I haven't even done anything. You have been accused of stealing heart-shaped tarts from the queen's kitchen. First, you don't know how to play croquet and then you dare steal tarts from my kitchen? You should be punished. Off with her head. This is silly. I haven't even stolen anything. I just reached the castle and started playing with the queen. She looked at the white rabbit, the mad hatter, the caterpillar and the Cheshire cat. They were all looking at her and smiling. What is going on? Alice felt someone tapping her arm. It was her sister. Wake up Alice. You fell asleep sitting next to me. It's time for lunch. What a strange dream I had. I promise I will never complain of being bored while you read. That is such a strange story, dear. Next time you sit to read, I too will write my own story instead of getting bored. Okay, but I have to be the first one you tell it to. Okay, Tofu? Yes. John stays with his cousins. Yesterday, he came late to the class and the teacher scolded him a lot. John said his cousin brothers made him finish their course before they let him leave for school. He said they always trouble him and make him do a lot of housework. Oh no! He must feel really bad. John is a very nice boy. He doesn't disobey anyone. He is very nice to his cousin brothers despite the way they treat him. That is very nice of him. We should always forgive people for their mistakes. Have you heard the story of Cinderella? Once upon a time, there lived a young girl called Cinderella. Cinderella's mother had died and so her father had married another woman who had two daughters. One day, Cinderella's father went to work and never returned. Cinderella was left at the mercy of her stepmother and two stepsisters who made her do all the work of the house. Cinderella, it's morning already. Where is our breakfast? Just a moment, stepmother. I am just bringing it out. As soon as Cinderella had laid the breakfast, the stepmother and stepsister started eating it. Cinderella served her own plate too and was about to eat when her stepsister pushed her own plate away. Yuck! I hate it! Yes, now that you mention it, it really is horrible. Mother, do something! Cinderella, are you trying to kill us? What kind of food is this? But, but stepmother, I have made it the way I always make it. How dare you argue with me? Go and make new breakfast for us. Don't you dare do anything else till we have had our breakfast. 
and this is what went on in their house every day. The stepmother and stepsisters troubled Cinderella without any reason. But Cinderella loved them still and never ever complained. One day, an announcement was made in the village. Let everybody know. There will be a royal ball at the palace tomorrow night and the king's son, Prince Charming, will marry a maiden from amongst the guests. Everybody from the village is invited. The whole village was excited. Even Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters couldn't stop talking about it in the house. And that is how Cinderella found out about the ball. The royal ball! Prince Charming! The whole village is invited! I will finish my work quickly so we can all go together. Won't it be just wonderful? You! Who said anything about you going? You will stay here and polish our shoes till you can see your face in them. And so with a heavy heart, Cinderella saw her stepmother and stepsisters dress up and leave for the royal ball the next day. Once they had left, she cried bitterly. Suddenly, her room lit up and Cinderella saw the most beautiful fairy she could imagine. She held in her hand a delicate wand. Who are you? Get up, child. I am your fairy godmother. I am here to get you to the royal ball. Really? I never knew I had a fairy godmother. But how will I get to the ball? I don't have anything to wear. You don't worry about that, my child. And so, in just a few minutes, Cinderella was ready for the royal ball. As she thanked her fairy godmother and got aboard the chariot, she received a word of caution from the fairy godmother. Remember to be back home at 12, otherwise the spell will wear off. Soon Cinderella arrived at the palace. As she entered the great ballroom, everyone turned to look who this beautiful maiden was. Nobody could recognize her. Not even her own stepmother and stepsisters. Prince Charming walked to her. May I have this dance with you? Yes, Your Highness. And so Cinderella and Prince Charming danced together throughout the evening. Till Cinderella heard the clock strike. 
fairy godmother's words came back to her. She needed to get out of there before the clock struck 12. Without saying a word, she tore away from the princess's grasp and ran out of the palace. The prince ran after her. Wait, wait! What is wrong? Why are you running? I don't even know your name. But Cinderella dared not wait or even look back. Her beautiful gown was already turning into rags again. Her hair was coming loose from the perfect bun that the fairy godmother had made for her. She didn't even stop when one of the glass slippers came off her foot and fell in the palace driveway. She ran out of the palace gates and vanished into the darkness on a path that led to her home. Once home, she went back to polishing the shoes that had been given to her and decided never to speak to anyone about the ball. A few days later, two men from the palace showed up at their door. The lady that Prince Charming fell in love with left behind her glass slipper at the royal ball. The prince believes that such a beautiful slipper could fit only his beloved. And so we're asking all the girls in the village to try the slipper. The one whom it fits would be the one the prince will marry. If you have any girls in the house, please ask them to try the slipper. Oh, yes, yes. I am sure it was one of my daughters. The slipper would fit one of them. And so both the stepsisters tried to fit their foot into the slipper one by one. They pushed and pushed but couldn't get their foot in. Looks like it wasn't your daughter's after all. Is there any other young lady in the house? No, there isn't. You can leave. As the king's men made ready to leave, suddenly the door of the house was thrown open. And Prince Charming himself stood there. Who is this beautiful girl in the upstairs window? Madam, you have lied to us. I demand that the girl be called forth and try the slipper. Y yes, yes, but she is only a servant girl. Nevertheless, Cinderella, Cinderella, come down here at once. Yes, stepmother. The moment Prince Charming saw Cinderella, he knew he had found his beloved. He took the slipper from the king's man and slipped it on to her foot himself. The slipper fit perfectly in a moment. Cinderella was once again transformed into the beautiful maiden from the night of the ball. Prince Charming took her to the palace with him. He ordered that the stepmother and stepsisters be punished for lying to the king's men and treating Cinderella so badly and rudely. But being the kind-hearted person that she was, Cinderella asked for them to be forgiven. The prince fell in love with her even more for her generosity and they lived happily ever after. Wow, Tia! How wonderful is it to forgive people! 
Thank you for telling me this story. I will tell it to John too. I'm sure he will like it. Okay. Shall we go home now? I think it's getting late. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.